Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Today, we're gonna to take a look at DCC decoders. Over the last 27 years that I've been reviewing DCC products, I've always tried to stay kind of unbiased in my outlook and always give everything a, um, a, an honest review uh, based on what I find at the time. I've never really uh, let my own personal feelings creep into those reviews. Uh, however, I do get a lot of questions from you guys out there uh, uh, asking me which decoders I recommend, which are the best, uh, which ones do I personally use. So today I'm finally going to come out and I'm going to answer those questions. So first we're going to go through and take a look at mobile decoders and then the various brands of sound decoders. I'll give you my perspective on those based on 27 years of working with various decoders. And then at the, uh, at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, spill the beans. I'm gonna tell you which decoders I personally use on my model railroad, because I do have my own favorites. So let's go ahead and get started. But first, I wanna ask you to support the channel by subscribing. You know, it does matter when you subscribe to the channel it fits into the YouTube algorithm. And that's very important for promoting the channel and making sure it keeps growing and attracting viewers. Uh, because if it doesn't, you know, I'm just gonna disappear. And we don't wanna do that. Uh, because I do enjoy, uh, you know, communicating with all of you and getting your comments and feedbacks. So what I'm asking you is to go ahead, subscribe to the channel, hit that little red uh, subscribe button. And when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Now, I've been doing, as I said in the opening, uh, reviews of DCC products for various magazines and in books and the like since 1994, when DCC first got its start here in the US. And during that time period, I reviewed products made by Bachman, uh, BLI, Digitrax, DCC Concepts, Loke Sound, uh, Lens, NCE, Soundtracks, TCS, Zemo, uh, and uh, Dynatrol, QSI, and Wangro. So during that 27-year uh, time span, uh, working with all these different uh, products, I've come up with a few of my own opinions about which are the best and which are not necessarily the best in certain ways. So let's go ahead and take a look uh, at all of these in order. And I'm just gonna uh, you know, keep this slimmed down as much as possible, but it's gonna be a long video. So for that, watch it in, in segments, you know? You don't have to watch the whole, um, however many minutes it turns out to be in one viewing. Go ahead, break it up over, uh, over the weekend and watch it in two or three segments, depending on how long it turns out to be. Well, let's start by taking a look at mobile-only decoders. And these are decoders that just provide power for your motor and for your various functions, your headlights and whatever else, ditch lights, that kind of thing. These two right here are, I believe, the first two decoders that I ever got from Digitrex. These are a DN93 and a DH93. So these go back to about production in 1993, and I got them in 1994. And um, I've just pulled those out of locomotives over time and replaced them with more recent uh, decoders. And this is, you know, they haven't changed very much. This is a D, uh, DN163, so a much more uh, current production. But as you can see, the size hasn't changed much. I think this one's probably rated at over one amp. That one was rated about half to three quarters of an amp. So things have changed a bit. Uh, I do like to use these kind of decoders here because they really, both NCE and Digitrax, as well as others, make these uh, boards that you know just pop right into an Atlas or an Atherin or various other uh, types of locomotives. And then I have this wide range of decoders for both N-scale and HO-scale from TCS. And uh, these, you know, you can, you can find what you need to fit just about any in-scale locomotive uh, with a drop-in type design. So uh, TCS has them, Digitrax has a lot of different ones. Uh, they all, you know, they specialize in 
producing drop-in decoders. So there's just a lot there available for you to choose from, from these different companies. Now the thing about mobile decoders is, because they don't have all of these sound functions and uh, indexed CVs generally, uh, they're very simple, comparatively, to program. There are a few companies now that still produce only um, these mobile-only decoders. Um, companies like DCC Concepts, Lens, and, and NCE do not produce sound decoders, but they do concentrate on producing a good product as far as the mobile only goes. So you'll find a lot of good options in those companies as well. Uh, Lens was a very uh, active company here in the US when DCC first started, but sometime around 2000 or so, they opted out of the uh, US market. And I really haven't kept up with them since. I know they're still active in Europe and the UK. So uh, all I can say is, the decoders that I uh, that I worked with from Lens were very good, and um, uh, they, as far as I know, they still only make the mobile-only decoders. I don't think Lens has gone into sound, NCE has not gone into sound, and DCC Concepts uh, has not gone into sound yet. Uh, the way that they uh, the way that DCC Concepts keeps expanding their line, I wouldn't be surprised to see them get into sound eventually too. Okay, so let's go ahead now and move on to sound decoders. Now when it comes to sound decoders, one thing to keep in mind, you get what you pay for. The less expensive decoders from companies like Bachmann and MRC are generally going to have fewer options available to you. They're probably going to have less impressive uh, sound packages uh, for your locomotives. They might not prove as reliable as some of the more expensive ones. And their tech support is not going to be as good I think, as Loke Sound or Digitrax or Soundtrax or some of the others like that. So that's basically what you're paying for. You're paying for technology and you're paying for tech support and you're paying for reliability. So think of that uh, when you're considering which of these that you want to purchase. Now, if you do end up buying a factory installed uh, sound decoder, uh, you may find that there are fewer features or options um, installed on these uh, uh, factory installed decoders. One of the ways that companies reduce the cost uh, with these is they uh, ask the manufacturer of the decoder to cut down to a basic set of sounds and effects. Uh, one, option, one, one example of this was I bought several of the Walther's F7 uh, locomotives uh, in Southern Paint Scheme. And the interesting thing was, they came with the two single chime horns, and that's all that was available. Now, on, on the Southern Railway, uh, by 1953, they had pulled all those daggone horns off and replaced them with Nathan M3s. So I'm kind of stuck now with decoders, sound decoders, in my locomotives that don't have the prototype, horn type, uh, available to me. And that's simply because Walther's only had uh, the sound package uh, options installed for that specific locomotive and set of horns. So that's one of the things that you might want to check into when you purchase a uh, factory equipped uh, locomotive. Um, what kind of sound options are really available? Another thing to be aware of is that in most cases with those factory installed decoders, they're a really good option because the, uh, the decoder is, is probably going to be customized for that specific locomotive. It's going to be uh, set up to operate very well with the gearing and, and the like in that particular model. So you're probably going to come out in the end quite well off on that respect. And they're going to have everything already set up for you. And the good thing about that is you're probably only going to need to make a couple of changes, maybe some sound volumes uh, need to be reduced or tweaked or something like that. But other than that, uh, that's about all you're going to need to change, which is very important with some of these complex decoders from Loke Sound uh, that are very difficult to program because they use a lot of indexed CVs and, and very complex interactions in those uh, CVs. So uh, be aware of that. So with that as an introduction to sound decoders, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the individual uh, decoder types from these various companies. Now this one right here is an old 
Bachman uh, sound decoder. And like I say, Bachman now is getting uh, their sound decoders for their uh, factory equipped locomotives from TCS and Soundtrax. I don't think they've gotten into using any of the Loke sound decoders as of yet. But Loke sound is very popular with Atlas and, uh, and a number of other manufacturers. So you will run into Loke sound, you'll run into uh, Soundtrax decoders, uh, you'll run into, in a few cases, uh, TCS decoders that have been installed in Bachman and Atlas and various other companies' uh, locomotives at the uh, factory. And so that's a positive thing because uh, it's probably the most economical way to go because you're going to get a decoder completely installed with a, uh, with a speaker uh, for a fairly good price. You know, there it's going to cost you less that way than if you purchased it separately and, in, and had someone else install the decoder and the speaker. Uh, if you can do it yourself, you, can, you might be able to save money or at least break even. Now another company that uh, produces their own sound decoders uh, is BLI. For a number of years they used QSI decoders, but they are now into using their own uh, production uh, decoders. Uh, and for the most part, I really do like the sounds that they have. They are very good, they are very well uh, customized to the individual locomotives uh, that they are uh, installed in. So I like those a lot. Unfortunately, BLI has a bad reputation for failures. Uh, also, uh, getting tech support uh, from them can be difficult. They're good about replacing things that uh, break or burn out, but uh, if you want to know something about programming them, they don't seem to know too much about their own decoders, uh, other than maybe changing simple CVs. Okay, now Digitrax, and these are all Digitrax sound decoders here that I've collected and need to install in some locomotives. But one thing about Digitrex, uh, they've been producing sound for some years now, and they have a lot of different uh, sound packages, uh, or, or actually over 80 different sound packages on their website in what they call their Sound Depot, where you can download them. Now, of course, they uh, offer a very good uh, set of effects and also, uh, the uh, uh, power management, it's the same as in their mobile decoders for the most part. So you're getting uh, a, a lot of good uh, product that way. The thing that I don't like too much about their approach to sound is they uh, came into this with the goal of producing a sound decoder that users, model railroaders, could develop their own sound packages and upload them into the decoders and go off on their merry way. Consequently, they don't have a lot of their own sound packages that they have developed. There's a number of them on there. And like I said, they have over 80 different sound packages on their website, but most of them have been developed by modelers and uploaded to their website there, which they encourage people to do. Uh, consequently, you have a difference in the, uh, or, or quite a bit of variability in the quality of those sound projects on their website. So you need to, uh, you do need to listen to those and maybe hook up a decoder to a, a decoder tester or a motor and download a bunch of files and check it out first before you commit to uh, going whole hog with their decoders. I did install one of their decoders, one just like this, I believe, in an Atlas RS1, and I like that sound package. It, uh, it does a pretty good job uh, for that particular locomotive. Some of the others I haven't been all that happy with. Now, Loke Sound is one company that has really come on strong in the last uh, five or six years or so. Uh, many, many companies are now using their decoders in their factory installed uh, locomotives, and they really do offer really good sound quality. And the uh, Loke Sound USA guys here um, are very, very proactive as far as going out and recording lots of new sounds from locom locomotives all over the U.S. and Canada. So we're really putting together quite a, a, a very impressive package of diesel locomotives. Uh, they have fewer uh, steam locomot locomotive sound packages available. And as far as uh, the U.K. and, and the like, um, a lot of, they do have a few, okay? They do have some sound packages that you can download for free. And that's one thing about the U.S. market. All of those uh, uh, project, sound projects available for download on their website are free. 
And all you have to have is a local programmer, uh, the software and the hardware, and you can upload uh, a free sound package to the decoder and you're up and running without uh, any additional cost. In the UK, that's not generally the case. A lot of the, uh, the best sound projects, you know, you're paying 20 pounds extra for those or so. And then, uh, you know, you have to get the dealer to upload them for you, and uh, then he sends them to you. Okay, so that takes care of the L's. Let's go on. This is an MRC decoder here. I've got another one, uh, the Sheer Brilliance. These are a few years old. I haven't been impressed with MRC uh, decoders. And uh, generally, I, uh, as a result, don't use them. So I can't say too much about them. Uh, the only locomotive that I ever had that came with one was an Athern Challenger. And uh, I took it out and replaced it with a TCS decoder. So uh, I'm very happy with using TCS decoders for my steam locomotives. So, you know, for that reason, I can't recommend MRC uh, decoders. You know, if you like them, that's great. They're a, a less expensive option, so um, you can try them out. Don't be surprised if they don't have all the options that you might think you're getting that uh, come with a Loke sound or some of the others, like the TCS and the Soundtracks. Okay, let's take a, a look at Soundtracks. Now, I've, I've been using Soundtracks in, in, uh, for many years. Back even before they started producing sound decoders, I, uh, in the uh, late 90s, I uh, was out in Denver on business and drove up one, uh, one evening to their uh, office uh, up in Broomfield, I believe, Colorado, and visited with them and got to see the prototype for their first sound decoder. And eventually they, they sent one to me for review. And these are some uh, very early ones uh, that even predate what they called their lo uh, low cost line. Uh, so those are very early versions. These, of course, are the uh, purple case tsunamis that are no longer produced. And over here are some of the uh, economies. And uh, the, uh, the uh, tsunami 2s are similarly uh, sized. Now, the great thing I like about uh, soundtracks is, you know, they're one of the oldest, uh, if not the oldest company, producing DCC sound decoders. And so they've got a good long track record on that. Uh, they have great sound. Uh, they're some of the simplest programming, as far as that goes, with uh, DCC sound decoders. Uh, I have found them over the years to be highly reliable, and they have excellent tech support. For, for my money, they're the best tech support uh, available. The other great thing about them, you don't have to upload uh, sound packages to the decoders. They come uh, preloaded with the sounds. Uh, on the economies, it's just uh, for diesel and for steam. They come with a, a, a certain selection. And you just have to look that up on their website. And it's some of the most popular ones. So like for this, uh, it covers the uh, 567 uh, di uh, diesel uh, prime mover and the Alco uh, prime mover. I believe it's the 244 in this case. And so I use this a lot in my RS3s and F7s and F3s and that type. And so they are just a great uh, inexpensive way to get sound into your locomotives. And so I, I use these a lot. Uh, for my UK, this is a uh, Economy Eco 100. Uh, we used to be able to get this in US uh, sounds, but unfortunately, because of shortages of parts around the world, Soundtracks has not been able to get an adequate supply of a certain part that they need for these uh, the, for this particular Eco um, 100 decoder. And so it's been out of production for a long time. They are able to get uh, a small amount of the parts, enough to produce for the UK market. So UK guys, this is the UK Steam. They also have a UK diesel version, and it has a selection of a number of different uh, prime movers or steam locomotive sounds recorded on it. So it is a great bargain for your, uh, for your UK locomotives. I have used these in all of my steam locomotives, and I've got about a dozen of my steam locomotives uh, with these installed in them now. I have also used the diesel version for my uh, GWR Flying Banana diesel. 
So uh, they, are, uh, they, they do have a number of different things worth looking at. And I believe Gage Master is their representative in the UK. And there is a website for Soundtracks UK that you can just Google and look up. And you can listen to the individual sounds for the different prime movers, the different steam locomotives, and the whistles uh, that they offer. Now, of course, the uh, Tsunami 2s are their top-of-the-line decoders, and they're offered in both this size format and uh, this one here, as well as the 21-pin format, the 18-pin format, uh, and probably and, and some of the larger scale type formats as well. So they uh, and, and they are, like I said, the top of the line, offer a lot more sounds and special effects options uh, that are not available uh, on these decoders. So you just have to take a look at what uh, at a comparison on their website and decide which you want to go and what's going to fit your needs. And um, they make these, the Tsunami 2 is they, they make a, uh, a version that has uh, EMD sounds loaded on it, another version that has Alco, another one that has Baldwin and, and some other related uh, sound packages. Uh, they have a GE sound package. So there's just a lot of different uh, versions of their uh, Tsunami 2 decoders that you can choose from to uh, fill in your needs without having to upload sounds at all. Now another company that has been really uh, uh, increasing uh, in the marketplace is TCS. You know, they go back many years, back into the 90s for making mobile-only decoders. And then about 2015, they started producing first the WOW diesel and then the WOW steam. And uh, those are both very nice uh, uh, decoders. They come, let me get one of them out here. So they come in sort of the standard HO size uh, format, uh, some of them with a Keep Alive already attached uh, to them and others that you can get without a Keep Alive. And with their uh, steam and their diesel, they come with all of their sounds installed on them. So if you get a diesel version, it's going to have you know all of your Alco, your EMD, your, your Baldwin, your GE, whatever they produce as far as sounds go, it's already preloaded on the decoder. So you can just pick and choose and just tons of whistles and bells and horns, all kinds of sounds, and they are just great from that perspective. And I really love their Alco diesel sound package and their, um, their general, all of their steam sound packages. They really do have great steam sounds. But I will point out that these do take a little bit more effort to program. It's a little bit more complex. It works, it's easiest if you use Decoder Pro. Uh, they also have a, a tool on their website that you can go to to calculate the various CVs in order to do the programming. So it, it does, it, it is a little bit more complex as far as the programming goes than say a Soundtracks. TCS also has a UK uh, a dealer now, a UK office. So if you uh, just take a look at uh, the TCS website, they have a link to the, uh, uh, to the UK dealer there and to their UK website. Now, one thing I haven't talked about in this video are the dead or soon to be dead uh, companies. And those are companies like Dynatrol and Wangro System One, uh, both uh, Wangro was a very, very active company in the early years of DCC, but they went out of business so in the early 2000s. Uh, Dynatrol had previously been a very popular uh, uh, command control system. It was not DCC compatible, but they did produce some DCC uh, decoder boards. But in the end, they were not able to overcome the head start that companies like Digitrax and Wangro and Lens and others like that had, uh, had been able to build up, and they folded as well. Now, another company that was very popular for a number of years was QSI. Uh, QSI is still around. They still maintain an active website. And if you go there, they have product listed for sale. But if you go to their groups.io support group or forum, uh, you will find that the most common question that's asked is, how do you get product out of these people? They, all, they, they advertise it, but they don't sell it. So that's one issue I see with them. If you cannot get them to sell you something, what are you going to do when you need tech support?
So QSI, you know, for you guys that really love them, and I know there are some people here that uh, uh, watch the channel that love QSI, you know, that's great for you. If you can get them out of the guy, that's good. But, um, you know, for most people, I don't see them as a viable option. Okay, so now it's time for the bottom line. I'm gonna answer the question as I told you I would, which decoders do I personally recommend and use in my model locomotives? So first, let's talk about the mobile-only decoders, the ones that can operate your locomotives, your special effects for your lights, that kind of stuff, but do not have any sound capability. Um, basically, I still go back to Digitrax. You know, I started back in 1994 with Digitrax products. My first two decoders were from Digitrax, and I've been using their decoders ever since. I found them to be very reliable. They hold up very well in regular use. Uh, they're easy to program. They're available in a variety of different shapes and sizes. And if you're into in-scale, they produce a lot of different drop-in type decoders for in-scale locomotives, if sound is not a, a, an, an issue for you. Uh, for that reason, I still will use theirs. And the places that I tend to use their mobile-only decoders uh, is in situations like ABA or ABBA or AB uh, lash-ups, where I'm going to operate a sound decoder in the A unit, and I'm just going to use a mobile-only non-sound decoder in the B units. And I have found that generally, uh, one, D, one sound decoder or two sound decoders, if it's an ABA uh, lash up, will make enough noise that it's not an issue. Uh, your ears get used to hearing uh, all that extra uh, volume from your A unit, and it just sounds like you got sound in the AB set too. So that's the kind of situation where I still use uh, mobile decoders. Now, in some cases, I still have some NCE decoders that I use, and they are very good decoders as well. Uh, they've been around almost as long as Digitrax has, and they offer a, a lot of good stable features. They're very reliable. So um, I still will use NCE, but again, Digitrax is my go-to for mobile-only decoders. Okay. So here we go, let's talk about sound decoders, because those are the important ones. That's what everybody's using these days in many cases, and those are the ones that cost the most. Um, for sound, I typically will use Soundtrax decoders. They, as I've said in the video, they're the easiest to uh, program. They offer a lot of features. They have very good sound, excellent tech support, and all around they are just a very, very good decoder. My favorite for my diesels here on the Piedmont Southern are the Economy Eco PNP, which means plug and play. So they have that standard uh, rectangular board that uh, fits into a lot of different diesel uh, locomotives, and I love their sounds, so I use those a lot. They are my go to decoder for my diesel fleet, and uh, they're fairly inexpensive. You can find them. Uh, on eBay for around $65, shipping included. So that's a very good price as far as putting sound into a large fleet of locomotives like I have here. And so I will very often turn to Soundtracks as my first choice. Now for my steam locomotives, I prefer the TCS decoders. I found that uh, I really like all the options of the different whistles and uh, bells that they have, and also their steam chuffs are very, very good. And I use those with a high bass speaker uh, located in the tender, and it makes a great sound combination for steam. Now, Loke Sound is a third choice for me. Uh, they don't offer quite as much in steam, but they have a lot as far as diesels go. So those are the ones that I turn to. Digitrax for my uh, mobile-only decoders, Soundtracks for most of my diesels, and TCS for my steam, with Loke Sound coming in a third in there uh, for their various uh, options on uh, their diesel decoders. Okay, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope I didn't offend anybody out there with my choices and my perspectives and, and personal opinions on 
uh, various brands of decoders because I know some people out there do have their own pet favorites and I get criticized sometimes if I uh, uh, knock one or the other. But, you know, like I say, this is my own personal perspective. You're welcome to yours. So that's it for today. Have a great weekend and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.